Um, I'm gonna get um, the clicker. This is me trying to keep my cool right about now. I can't advance the slides until I get the clicker. So I'm just gonna keep on talking until it comes in, in case any of you guys have ever done this on social media. This is how I feel when I do an Instagram Live. And you're just waiting for that one person to roll on in and you're like, I'm gonna keep on talking. Nobody's asking me questions, thank you so much. I'm gonna keep on going and act like it's not sweating through my jacket, okay. Uh, I am so happy to be here, I wanna say welcome. Today we're gonna to be talking about building your personal brand on social media. Heck yes, I am with my people. Because I don't know about you, but I love selling on social, SOS. We're changing what that means. We don't need help, we're here to help others. Can I get an amen? amen? All right. There are people, there are people who are more, there are people who are better sellers, better marketers, better educated, better connected, whose daddy can fund everything that they want and they still can't do what you do because you are doing it your own way against the previously established rules. This has taught me to believe and live my life that impossibilities are actually possibilities in disguise if we choose to see them that way. Because there's people in this room who are like, okay, Jasmine, that sounds, that sounds good, but like, really, girl, how'd you build a business? My response is, it built a brand. That's it. Now, a brand is expectations, memories, and stories, and relationships that count for a consumer's decision to choose one product or service over another. Ladies and gentlemen in the room, you are selling the same thing. Why, as me, a consumer, will I choose to buy the same thing that everyone is selling simultaneously in the room? Why would I choose to buy from you, or you, or you, or you? Why? So how can you create a brand on social media? So a very simple exercise, we get the foundation to get into actually Q&A, because that's coming. We're gonna have two microphones going around the room and we're gonna fire right on through them so we can get granular. What I would love for you to do is to list three words. Now just go through this exercise and later on in your hotel room you can amend, but right now let yourself be, let yourself live in a childish wonder of what it would feel like to sit in a hotel in Anaheim, California and start building your brand. List three words. And I want these words to be descriptions of what you dream, your dream customer will say about you when you walk out of a room. I want you to focus on words that are about you and not your business. I don't want you to choose words that are like animal print, feminine, sparkly, right? Those are the things we sell. No, you. Because remember, they're buying from you. I want you to choose these three words that are about who you are, not who you aspire to be. Let me give you an example. I'm talking with my husband a couple days ago. I sent him a meme on Instagram, and it's about something like, let the wild girls run free. And my husband's looking at it, he's like, cool, yeah, but you're not wild. And I was like, I I'm wild. I'm like, really wild. And he's like, really? He's like, when I ask you to go camping, you say, I just like to camp under the five stars of the Four Seasons. Is that a problem? And he's like, you're anything but wild. So I think back to, oh, this goes back to the brand, right? Like how many of you want to be like, I'm so fashion forward. <laughs> Let's be real. Let's ask your friends and family, right? How do you want somebody to describe you as you? The real you, all of you, unapologetically you. Step into your superpower even if you think it's a liability. And lastly, these three words are going to become your barometers of success. What's a barometer of success? How do we measure how effective you are at building your personal brand? Is when you hear people mirroring back what you're putting out. Oftentimes when I first started building my business as a photographer, I have since transitioned, but in the beginning, I have multiple iterations of my business and I do the same practice. In the beginning, I would sign things, stay fabulous, Jasmine. That was my email signature. I grew up obese, I was about um, roughly 180 pounds, I was less than five feet tall, I always had greasy hair, I was very poor, we had government assistance food. Nobody in my entire life ever described me as fabulous until I would walk into rooms and say, mom, let me introduce you to my photographer. She's fabulous. 
barometers of success. What we put out becomes mirrors of how people describe you. Now, in the beginning, when I started my business, my three words were fun. I wanted my clients to describe me as fun. If they said Jasmine is fun, I knew I was building a personal brand around the things that I wanted. Fresh. I didn't want to be a stodgy, old school photographer. So I wanted them to say, wow, she's doing something different. She's doing something unique. And lastly, I wanted to have them describe my work as editorial, that they felt like they could be in a magazine, that they felt like models for a day. When my client said this about me, I knew I was on to something. Currently, as a business strategist and a founder of a tech company that provides resources for business owners, I want my words to be inspired, possible, and consistent. They all work together. Because if you walk out of this room and you believe that you are inspired, you will then know how to show up differently. You will then believe that your big year, the big year that you're like every single month this year, I'm gonna do 50,000. Crazy? Crazy? Well, maybe if you're inspired to define the thing that you wanna do, it starts mapping to the level of consistency that you need to do to achieve your goals. Because what got you here, what got you to your 15, 20, $25,000 a month won't get you to your $50,000 a month until you change. Can I get an amen? Because doing the same thing over and over again will not get you anything different. It'll get you more of the same. If you want to double, your actions must map your aspirations. You must be consistent in an entirely different way. Are we on the same page? Yes. Okay, yes, yes, I got two yeses. What you're looking at is one of my very first websites, 2008. I, of course, had a website that showcased what I did, photography. But half of the website was about me, what I ate, what I liked what I smelled like, what I read. And many people were repulsed by the idea that I would put this out online. And anybody who wasn't was pre-qualified to already be a customer. I didn't have to fight for sales. They knew they wanted to work with me. I have practiced everything I preach. If you go to jasminestar.com, I make you, I throw so much of who I am in your face that I push you away. And if you still happen to be around on the last click, on the last page, we're doing things.